Welcome everyone to the session called Lawyering in a Virtual World. This session is a panel discussion that will be a conversation on how to work effectively in a hybrid or virtual law firm. And the panelists will focus on kind of best practices for a successful summer, including topics around networking, asking for feedback, and just effective communication while working virtually. The panelists slated to speak are all associates at Perkins Cooey. My name is Sharon Ford, and I'm a change management manager at Perkins Cooey. So my role is to help people within our firm transition as we go through various changes. In this case, the new ways of working in a hybrid environment. We're going to start off by having the panelists introduce themselves, and then I will provide a short overview of what we're doing at Perkins Cooey in terms of hybrid work, so you can get a better feel for the environment that our, our panelists are working in when they respond to your questions. So I will go ahead and hand it over to um, Kim. I'll let you go ahead and begin the introductions. Good morning, everyone. Um, good afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Um, my name is Kimberly Harris. I'm a third year in our Chicago office. Um, I'm from the Chicago area. I went to Syracuse for undergrad, Princeton for grad school, and then I came back to Illinois uh, to go to Northwestern to get my uh, law degree. Um, and prior to law school, I worked in um, local government. Uh, but now uh, at Perkins Cooley, I primarily support our trust and estate planning group. Um, but I'm also working to develop an expertise in nonprofit organizations as well. So I'm trying to figure out a way to kind of merge those two worlds a bit. Um, and I also help to support our healthcare um, regulatory practice. Um, I spent both of my summers at Perkins, um, my 1L and 2L summers, um, before starting full time in 2019. Um, so I was an associate for a little less than six months before we went remote. So that's kind of my experience um, working in this kind of like hybrid place we're in now. Great. Um, we'll go Malika next. Hi everyone, my name is Malika Moore. I'm a third year in the FinTech practice at Perkins Cooley. I'm based out of DC. Um, I'm from Prince George's County, Maryland. I went to the University of Maryland College Park for undergrad and Harvard Law School. Um, and I joined Perkins last summer. And so I have a bit of experience being virtual at two different firms. Um, and I would say that thus far, I've really, you know, see a lot of pros and cons to the virtual um, work environment. And so I'm happy to um, share my experience and also answer any questions you all have. Great, um, for my next. Hi everyone, I'm Garme Gorululu. I am a first year associate in the Portland office of Perkins Cooey. I graduated from Duke Law in May um, after doing my undergrad at Stanford. In between undergrad and law school, I worked as a legal assistant at an immigration law firm for a couple years. Um, Portland is home, so I came home after law school. Uh, these first six months being a first year associate in the business litigation group have been really interesting. I've been able to do a lot of different kinds of work. And so right now I'm trying to make sure that I am seeking out assignments in different areas to make sure that I'm kind of getting the full scope of what is possible as a business litigator. And I did my first summer um, in Kansas City, Missouri with another firm in person. And then I did my second summer with Perkins Cooley Portland virtually. And then I've been working virtually. So I'm happy to talk about the differences between those two summer programs as well. Great, thank you all. So again, wanna take a few minutes to sort of tell the story about what happened um, with Perkins Cooey and then we'll go into the questions. So um, like most companies, Perkins Cooey and other law firms had to quickly pivot to the remote environment. Uh, fortunately, all of our attorneys and most of our staff had laptops. So it wasn't a challenge really getting equipment to people, but we were rolling out a new tool called WebEx for phones and chat and video conference. So training needed to be offered on that. And during that training, we not only offered training on how to use the technology, but also training on kind of how to best present yourselves, lighting's position of the camera, some of those things. And we shipped monitors and cameras and stuff home because people very quickly realized that working in front of a small laptop screen eight hours a day is probably not gonna be the most efficient way to work. So although training was offered on the tools and techniques, people also had to figure out how to make those connections virtually and how to engage with people virtually. Um, you know, before the pandemic, we already had practice group across offices, but most of the engagement there was around audio calls, not video calls. So over time, people got used to doing more video calls, not only internally, but also with our clients and improved on kind of the use of those features for that. 
But the interesting challenge that's coming into play now with a hybrid model, the hybrid meaning some people in the office and some people still working uh, remotely are, people are finding it more difficult to figure out how to work remotely. If there are four people in the office and three people connecting on a meeting at home, what do you do? Do the four go into the office in a conference room and connect? Or, and then the three are sort of a full screen in what, you know, the Brady Bunch view, or does everybody just participate from their office so that everybody's sort of on the level playing field and what you see? So those are just some of the small nuances and challenges as we think about what the hybrid environment is and how it's different from a remote work. Um, the other challenge is we are not telling people at Perkins Coie that you must be in the office a certain amount of time. We're saying come in for client or business needs. And frankly, after two years of working remotely, People don't miss the commute and they don't miss having to get fully dressed every day. Um, but there are some negatives, which obviously our panel will, will share with you, you know, about kind of the work-life balance and separating home and office um, and onboarding, something that affects all of you who are participating in this session today. You know, how do you get ingrained? How do you understand the culture? Studies have shown that relationship building takes place in person, even through casual conversations in the hallway at a luncheon. So, you know, what can you do to kind of encourage those connections? And a lot of mentoring and training took place previously in person, sort of over the shoulder. An associate might go into a partner or senior counsel or somebody's office and participate in a client meeting and learn and, and watch and do some of that. You can do that in a virtual meeting, but a lot of times there's more coaching that takes place in person. So, you know, just thinking about some of the, again, nuances, one of what we would say is probably the biggest things to consider in a hybrid model is flexibility. At Perkins Coie, we're having a six month introductory period, letting people try things out, we'll be gathering feedback, and really, we all need to live in this model for a while, so I'd encourage all of you um, to keep flexibility in mind and realize that no law firm really has it all figured out because people are just starting to transition from what was 100% remote to this hybrid model. So let's jump into some of the panel questions, which you guys are probably here for that, not to listen to our story. So um, I'll start with, what would you say are the biggest challenges of remote work? Any one of our panelists who wants to jump in? Um, I can go ahead and start. Um, I would say one of the biggest challenges, it is just connecting with people and getting to know your colleagues. Um, there are definitely ways to do that. And I think maybe this isn't a complete challenge, but depending on your personality, sometimes being virtual can make it easier um, than being in person if you're extremely introverted or things like that. But I think generally speaking, um, you know, grabbing coffee or grabbing lunch and things like that um, don't really happen <laughs> virtually. And so it can be difficult to kind of build that rapport, um, which I do think um, can be critical to getting assignments and just sort of progressing in a firm environment. Great, anybody else, especially anybody wanna to speak to that introvert? Because we have heard there are some challenges both in person and virtually. I was, I was just going to add that one of the challenges of, vir of working virtually is that you can't pick up on cues from other people as well. So if you're coming into the office and just seeing what other people are doing, like seeing when somebody arrives and when they leave or when they take their lunch break or how they're dressed or just the general culture that kind of can be unsaid. And so part of what I've had to do is ask a lot more questions that I might have been able to just kind of figure out on my own by just looking around. And sometimes I can take a lot of energy to feel like you're, um, you're always having to seek out information and, certain, and things that should be kind of just readily apparent to you. And so as an introvert or as a person who discovered that they were more of an introvert during the pandemic, I realized that a lot, a lot of calls, I had to like psych myself up or like um, work on my energy level. And I didn't really think about that before the pandemic. Interesting. Anything else anybody can think of right now or we'll move on? Um, no, I think Malika and Garmi are what they said was so true. I've experienced, I've been thinking about all those things the past couple of years. Um, I think I was 100, like, I know that I'm an, I'm an introvert. Like, you know, my Myers-Briggs, I'm like, 
really far on, on the introverted side. So I thought working from home initially was gonna be like the best thing ever. Um, I, would I thought I would probably prefer that. And I think I still do maybe a little bit more than going into the office, but um, I think, you know, you do start to miss the, the, the interaction directly with people and actually just getting out the house and um, being around your colleagues and just having that, that, that chit chat, like um, you were saying, Sharon, just like, you know, in the hallways where you can just kind of have those small connections that give you a little bit more energy to kind of go about your day. Whereas when you are working 100% um, remote, you're only going off of your energy a lot of the times, or sometimes you'll have video calls throughout the day, but there are days where you may not have any calls. And so it's just you and your energy all day, every day. Um, so you really have to kind of like find that intrinsic motivation, which can definitely be challenging. Um, finding that work-life balance is also has, has been a challenge because you, it's very difficult to kind of figure out where your day starts and ends. Um, and your workday starts and, and when your personal life kind of starts up, you know, later on in the day as well. So um, I found that to be a challenge. I don't miss the commute, but I did like the fact that the commute was that break in my day um, where I can kind of transition from work to home, catch up with people throughout the day uh, or catch up with people that I hadn't spoken with in a while, but you don't really have that as much and um, you have to be very intentional about it. Great, thank you all. So. What are some of the benefits that, that you would say you've experienced or you've heard about in a virtual setting? I can, I can go for it. No, no, go for it. I, was say, I think one of the benefits is um, there's been more just uh, virtual coffees. I think they sometimes happen. You do have to reach out to people, but I've been a lot more comfortable reaching out to people in other offices to ask about their practice areas. Um, I think I might've done that on the phone, but it's, I think I've built better connections because we're talking on video and um, we've been able to like see each other. And there's been more, I think Perkins did a really good job of messaging that for the first year associates of get to know people, get to know people outside of your office, get to know other associates who aren't in your office as well. And I think that's been made easier with um, all the technology that we have. Great, anyone else, any thoughts on some of the benefits? Um, yeah, I can add, um, I think there are actually a lot of benefits. I know, um, obviously not having to commute and just in general cost savings of not like spending money um, on coffee and lunches and things like that. Um, obviously in big law, we often work really late. And so I know I personally appreciate not having to Uber home at like 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night and um, just already being home. Um, but, you know, that separation can get blurry um, without that breaking your day. But I appreciate it. I also get to spend more time with my family um, because I'm home and I can see the people that live in my house a lot more than if I was in the office for 12 to 14 hours a day um, working. So I think those things just kind of round your life out a bit more um, than maybe if we weren't virtual. Great. Um, what about, did any of you specifically have a networking plan to meet people who are vital to your career kind of you know there's been a little bit of touch on kind of reach out um, and be intentional but you know did you or do you have a recommendation on what would a net, good networking plan be for a virtual environment who how how often um I know I didn't have a formal plan, but um, once I kind of, once I lateral to Perkins, um, obviously it was critical to start to meet people. And um, at my prior firm, I did have a couple months before we went home to, you know, work from home to meet people um, in person. And so one approach that I took was to just set up these virtual introductions, coffee chats with partners, other associates. And one thing that was pretty cool is that it wasn't weird to do it with people in different offices because now those boundaries didn't really matter anymore. And so I felt like I could connect with a lot of people across the firm. Um, and most people are generally receptive and will make time, 30 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes, um, just to kind of see your face and understand what work you're interested in doing. And I would say, since I, I still have them kind of pop up if, as I learn of new people that I should connect with, um, but I probably did about like 20 or 30 of them over the 
like six or seven months um, after I started. And so it doesn't have to be every day, maybe like once a week, but um, it is a nice way to build your network. Great, any other thoughts on that? Anybody do anything different or similar? About the same. Okay, so um, networking is one thing. Before the pandemic, visibility was often a factor in getting new work. Associate might be having lunch with somebody, you might be in the hallway and they might stop and say, hey, are you busy? Can you help with this you know, matter? So in a virtual world, how are you finding that you get new work? Um, I would say similar to the networking plan, just connecting with um, different members of your group. Um, across offices, that's been very helpful for me to um, reach out first to the attorneys in my practice group in Chicago. And if their work isn't there at that time, then also reaching out to other partners that I've worked on other matters with or um, that I want to work more with and just reaching out to them, letting them know what my interest is and what my goals are, um, seeing if they have anything that can help um or that they have any matters that they can hand down at that time and same way with like more senior associates as well um that's like a, one of the best sources of, of work um and so just reaching out to them and letting them know like hey um this is what i'm looking for um and then kind of really more so the either face-to-face -face interactions or the emails maybe some follow-up phone calls but it's just really more persistence than anything and the other differences. I mean, obviously practice groups different in many ways in the way they allocate work. So I don't know if there's. In the Portland office, we have a workflow coordinator for the litigation group. And so um, one another way in addition to everything that Kim said is just co communicating with that person and letting them know general bandwidth. It's difficult for me as a first year to know when busy periods are going to come. So I try to check in with my mentor and other people who've been here for a little bit longer to say like, this is what I'm staffed on. Um, there's, it's, there's a little bit of a lull right now, but do you, can you anticipate this picking up? Should I go look for something else? What kinds of things should I be saying when I'm like interacting with people? So there's a lot of, um, like Kim said, there's a lot of talking to different types of people and um, making sure that you're on people's radar. Um, and one thing you just mentioned is mentors. And I know a lot of law firms have formal mentors. I've also heard that some of the mentors just sort of show up. Does anybody have any experience in kind of connecting with somebody in some way and, and suggestions for people who are kind of out there looking for mentors casually, but don't really know how to approach that person in the future? If there's any, or does it just sort of happen organically? It does happen organically, I think it, but I think it also helps when um, you kind of find a productive and useful way to pester the person and kind of like, you know, just don't go away. Um, and so one of my mentors, um, I had been trying to kind of figure out how I can be a little bit more in his bubble before the pandemic, but then when the pandemic hit, he had a lot of work. Um, because his work is connected to um, healthcare, and so I was just like, "Whoa, he need he needs associates." So I was like, "I'll help," and so I just kept volunteering to help, and that allowed, even though it wasn't in my practice, my primary practice area, but I was able to um, use that to really start to get to know him and understand him and his practice, um, and then kind of found my way. I just. Now, I'm much more comfortable with him now because I've had that background that I've worked with him, but then we've had conversations where we can just, you know just get to know each other. And I think that that was very helpful to just volunteer first to help him on something. And it could be a pro bono matter as well. It doesn't have to be like, um, you know, billable matter that's specific to one practice group or another. Um, but I think that was helpful for me. Okay, any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I would just add that um, one of the mentors that I um, gained since my time at Perkins, we actually don't do any of the same work. Um, we just happened to join the firm kind of around the same time and she's a partner. Um, and we met in person and like went to lunch and she was very nice. And she just like checks in on me and vice versa. And we don't talk about work, um, like actual substantive things, but it's nice to have someone at the firm that you can kind of, bounce things off of and talk about career trajectories and other things outside of the day-to-day -day, uh, deliverables that you work on. Right. 
I was just going to add, I think it's important to find multiple mentors because sometimes you'll vibe with somebody for different needs that you have, like a person just checks in on you and you can be kind of vulnerable and real with versus somebody who's like in your practice group who knows like the general career path and like the decisions that you need to be making versus someone who's in, in a, like an area that you're interested in so they can kind of tell you how to get into it. And so it's really important to expand your network and meet as many people as possible because you don't know what one person is going to be the person who you really connect with. Absolutely. Yeah, nice, nice. Great feedback, everybody. So one of the things that um, we're hearing is a bit of a challenge in a hybrid workplace is, is communicating like your availability when you're planning to go into the office or for you identifying when somebody that is going to the office that you wanna go in at the same time. So is there anything that you've started to work on or work out to communicate your availability, to communicate availability within the practice group? to say, hey, who's going in when? So you can meet and hook up in person. Not really. This is, this, is one, <laughs> this is one of those challenges because we're just starting to go back exactly. into the office. People are sort of figuring it out. Um, but I guess my perspective, and I'd love to hear yours, is that you do need to sort of let people know um, and is that, you know, is that, hey, I think I'm planning to go in and you ask a couple of people or, or do you reach out and say, are you coming in at all next week? I thought maybe I'd go in the office and be nice to just, you know, meet for coffee or something like that. I mean, have any of you experienced any of that yet? I know we're very new at Perkins Coie, just starting to go back a couple of days. Yeah, um, so so because Perkins does kind of operate as just one firm, a lot of the people I work with on a day-to-day -day basis are in DC, but there are about three of us who are. And so if someone's planning to go in, they'll just say, hey, I'm thinking of going in on Thursday. Let me know if you'll be in. And then if, you know, if we are, we'll get coffee or something, but um, we don't really feel pressured to go in because someone else in our small cohort will be there, but we have decided that maybe once a month we'll plan something, whether it's dinner or to come in the office on the same day or do some other activity together in person so that we can, you know, stay connected, but not necessarily feel like we have to hop up and come in um, to work in the office if we hadn't planned to do that. But I will say, if you don't have anybody to connect with when you go in the office, it will kind of feel pointless because you could have just stayed at home and done the exact same thing. And so I think if you're gonna go in, it's probably worthwhile to let people know. Okay. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm similar in that I work with people across various offices and practice groups. So it's kind of challenging to kind of just figure out who's going in on what day. Um, thankfully, if I do go in, someone's usually around. So I don't really, I haven't started to coordinate it as well just yet. Um, but I do like to look for um, social activities that are happening on that same day and then um, choose to go in on that day. Um, so our, our firm managing partner, um, Bill Malley, when he was in um, Chicago, I think, last week or the week before I, I went in on the day that he was going to be hosting like a little reception in my practice group is getting together next week to have like a little happy hour after work so I'm going to go in on that day so trying to find times when people will all be together but everyone's kind of still scattered about and then with my experience I only live a couple blocks away from the office um, and that was on purpose um, and so I actually been coming in quite a bit I'm, I'm in the office right now um, so for me I tend to be in the office like two to four days a week which for some people that's that's a lot of time so there's I've taken advantage of the opportunity to meet people that I may not have met um, otherwise because there's a small cohort of us that are in the office and so I'm on the litigation floor but I'll sometimes go up to the business floor and see who's around and during before we did the transition back to work uh, we used to have lunches uh, that were ordered for us and so you'd get a list of who all was in the office and we'd all go up to the, the hospitality suite to go get our lunches and that would be a good time to meet people and see who was in the office as well and so when there weren't that many people around it was kind of nice to build those um, personal connections when we would be like, oh, you're in the office, I'm in the office, da, 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 da. Um, people are coming back in now because the Portland office is busy with a couple trials. And so there's been a lot of activity of people here for a specific reason. So there hasn't been a day that I've come in where I haven't spoken to anybody or felt like it was a waste to come in. 
Okay. Um, question just popped up in chat, so I'll, I'll sort of address this one and then we'll move on to some other ones we have. So if the firm says that, you know, you should be in twice a week, do you think it's advisable for a summer associate or a first year associate to keep to that? Or what actionable tips do you have for working efficiently at home, given the potential distractions of working from home? So either kind of looking at it, you know, should, and, and I think this question is getting at, uh, you can chat back, um, you know, do you think the summer associate should stick to the schedule or maybe be there more often? You know, what might behoove them? Any thoughts on that first? like our may will have a good response to this one um i'll just say that i think for both whether you're a summer associate or first year associate it's best to go in as often as you can on the early, uh, initially just to get a feel for the office get a feel for who comes like i said who comes in on what days um how it just feels to be in the office but i don't especially as a summer associate i think you should get an idea of what that hybrid environment looks like so i think if you are able to not come in on certain days um, if you don't have meetings, um, um, in-person in meetings, or if you don't have a social event that's maybe happening that day, I think you should at least maybe spend one or two days a week after a few weeks um, just working remotely so you can kind of get a feel for what that looks like and how your how that firm connects remotely and so work, start working through some of the, the challenges that may be pr present there that you wouldn't realize otherwise. Right. Anyone else? And, and so speaking of that, that kind of gets to the second part of the question. Um, do any of you have some actionable tips for working efficiently at home, given the likely of distractions at home? Um, just kind of to answer the first part of the, or the middle part of the question, I was just talking about this with some other associates in council yesterday about how um, if a lot of us are staying home, how with the summer, when the summer associates come, we have to be more intentional about coming in to make sure they're not coming into an empty office. Um, so I think by the time the summer rolls around, people are feeling more comfortable and we're kind of in our own pattern of when we come in, I think the office will be even more lively. So I'm hoping that'll be your experience as well. But I highly recommend for the person who's asked this question to speak to whichever mentor you've been assigned to, if your firm has formal mentorship or talking to a recruiter about how um, this rule is being talked about, right? So like if everybody knows that you're only expected to be in the office twice a week, then I think that's that's the rule. But I think there sometimes are unwritten rules of like, oh, I see so-and-so in the office every day, you know? And for better or for worse, I think what I'm worried about from an equity standpoint is how we're thinking through um, if we're saying one thing, but then expecting another thing. And so I think it's really important to talk to people and kind of get a sense of that pretty early on. Um, and then also you can structure your days. So that'll signal to people that you're still working when you're virtual, right? So even if you're working from home, if you're still scheduling virtual coffees or saying, hey, let's meet virtually, then I'm gonna be in the office on this day next week, maybe we can meet in person. It shows that you're still staying engaged while you're at home too. Great. Anything else on that? Okay. Um, how do you ask for feedback while working virtually? Again, this goes back to a lot of times people who would walk down the hallway and say, hey, do you have a minute? And I wanted to get some feedback on you know, something. Um, what are the techniques you are all using for asking for feedback? Yeah, actually, sorry. I didn't wanna skip over the last part and I also asked the feedback part just about working efficiently at home. I would say most of these firms will make sure you have what you need, but if you need something, definitely ask for it. Um, quite frankly, when I went into the office for the first time a couple weeks ago, I was not nearly as productive as I was at home because I invested a lot of time and effort to get my home work environment set up in a way that works well. So I would say definitely put the time into figuring out what you need to work at your highest level, um, like I have two monitors and a laptop because I want all the computer real estate that I can get when I'm working from home. Um, but if you need like, I don't know, a headset or extra, you know, a wireless mouse, whatever things like definitely ask for it so that you're not at home suffering, trying to do your job that already is gonna require a lot of you. Um, and supplies like down to pens and paper and ink for your printer, like ask for the things that you need so that you can be most productive. Okay. 
Thanks. Yeah. Uh, and then on the feedback part, I would say just we um, I would recommend setting up time with the people that you work with on their calendar and um, asking for 15 minutes to maybe go over an assignment that you did with them to get their feedback um, and you know, come prepared, run a red line against, you know, the final product and what you sent. So you have a sense of, you know, what the differences were, but um, I think scheduling it, people tend to be happy to carve out a few minutes to talk about things. And, you know, it's always good too at the end of those calls to ask if they need help with any other projects. That's another good way to see um, how well you did because they'll want to continue to work with you, so. That would be my suggestion. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else has to add? Yeah, that tip about asking if they have anything else at the end is a great way to continue that relationship and conversation. Yeah. All right. Um, we've got a little over 10 minutes. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Um, a lot of what we've talked about has not necessarily only been in hybrid work, but um, we're going to take maybe a little bit away from that. What advice would you give yourself as a summer associate from where you sit today? And so I'll just have each of you, you know, touch on that because there's probably something a little bit different. Anyone care to start? Um, as a summer, I mean, have fun, you know, hopefully you can just enjoy the experience, meet as many people as you can, get a feel for what um, the work looks like, what being in that environment, working, how, what being, like, sorry, what working in that environment looks like, um, and just try to soak in as much as you can. I think that's um, a really great way to just approach the summer, like, you know, work hard, but enjoy it as much as you can, like, and really, um, as we've said, you know, connect with people, um, your summer class, uh, those will be like, you know, those are your war buddies when if, if you decide to um, start at that at the same um, firm uh, the, the year after you will already have that connection you will already know them you'll be able to go ask them those like little silly questions that you may not be comfortable asking someone else yet. Um, so really, you know, build those bonds with your summer class um, and then make connections with people in your practice group as well as just um, as many, especially the people who show up to the summer events, because they're really showing that they are invested in you. They're invested in um, ensuring that your transition to the firm um, is successful. So, you know, those are great people to reach out to if you're not sure who you should connect with. Um, they'll always give you names of other people to connect with. You know, after talking with you, they can make suggestions. And so that way, when you um, start the firm again a year later, it's all this time has passed. You will have those friendly faces. You will know people. Um, you will be able to kind of transition hopefully a bit smoother. Great. Well, um, I would tell myself to trust my gut a little bit more. Um, there were some things where I would test out a project and be like, I don't really like this very much. And I don't know why I don't like this very much, but I would kind of be stubborn and say, well, I mean, if you just keep doing it, like it'll get better, right? Or you're, you're afraid because you don't understand what you're doing. But there were certain things where I was like, oh no, I like this area of practice or I like this type of assignment, or I like working with this type of partner. Um, and those things were pretty, I could see the seeds of that during my summer program, but I didn't, um, like, I, I didn't understand why yet. Um, but if I had been more confident in understanding myself and knowing myself and being confident in um, the fact that I, even if I don't have the full universe of types of work that I want to do, there are certain things that I can make concrete decisions on. I would be able to, I would have been able to come in as a first year with a little bit more, um, intentionality about the things that I was seeking out and the opportunities that I wanted. And so I think there's, you can't perfectly chart your path to wherever you're going, but I think it's really important to know that wherever you ended up, you're there for a reason and that you can trust yourself as you're trying to navigate through the initial things that you're exposed to. Great. Alika, anything? Um, I just wanna echo um, what Kimberly said, like really get to know your summer class and even if you don't wanna come into the office to work, like y'all should find time to connect and do things in person socially um, and really build those um, relationships. I know my summer class was the main reason I picked my firm um, as, a, you know, as a 2L because 
it was just such a good experience. And I was like, okay, I know I have this group of people when we start that we're going to, and we're still friends to this day and I don't work there anymore. And so I would say invest in that, even if you're one of those people that really doesn't want to go into the office, um, trying to carve out time to build that relationship. Great. All right. Um, just a reminder, if anybody does have any questions, you can put them in the chat and we'll try to address those. Um, so what is the craziest thing you experienced practicing or what's a legal war story? I would like to say that maybe we'll end on a positive note, but I'm afraid it might scare people away. But anybody have a crazy story or a, you know, legal war story that they want to share? I think that's fun. That's a funny question because we haven't been practicing that long. So, I mean, it's always uh, possible. Um, it wasn't, it was through a pro bono um, matter that I was working on. <laughs> Angie likes the war stories. Um, it was uh, through a pro bono matter I was working on. I was doing my first year and I was just trying to gain additional experience um, in the broad area of estate planning and wanting to see what probate court was like. And I'm a transactional person, so I never went to be in a courtroom ever in my life. Um, but uh, that was, it was really cool. It allowed me to actually go before a judge, um, you know, present my, the, 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 sorry, what I was working on with, pro, with the pro bono case was um, a probate matter, guardianship, minor guardianship. Um, and so trying to figure out whether um, a child should be, um, if the guardianship should be terminated, then child should be, um, allowed to go back with her mother and so it's again I'm not used to this space it was very intimidating but I received some information after one of our hearings that I needed to, to present to the judge and so I was like trying to find time with her you know so I was kind of just sitting in court just waiting for her like to get a break so I can kind of go show her all these text messages that had been exchanged amongst the parties that just had expletives and a lot of weird stuff. And now it's just like, hey, judge, can you look at this and help me understand what I'm supposed to do with this? <laughs> I was just like, I need your advice. I'm not sure what you what, what we should do. And so she was she was great. Um, and kind of like, you know, we talked through maybe uh, the different approach that we could take in, in the matter um, to make sure that the child was safe and that all the parties were safe um, and that they were uh, interacting a bit better, but it was this, that was weird to have to actually show those types of things to a judge in a professional way. All right, thanks. Anyone else? Maybe not yet. Maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> um, okay, one other question came into chat. What is your advice for making the most of your summer job and distinguishing yourself positively? And you talked about having fun and connecting with summer associates, but this I think takes a little bit of, you know, kind of distinguishing yourself in a positive way. Any thoughts? Um, one thing I would say is um, to seem interested in whatever it is that you're doing. A lot of times people are practicing areas of law that they really care about and that they've kind of built their life around and so even if it's boring like find a question to ask or find some way to show that you're engaged with whatever subject matter you're working on even if you know deep down it's super boring to you and you really don't like it just kind of show that you're interested in learning and getting to know that person and being a part of the firm um, because everyone just wants to find good co-workers and so in a way that you sh the way that you show that is just being positive, having a good attitude, trying to be helpful and being engaged. So that would be my recommendation. Great, anything else, any other tips? Okay. Oh, and do good work. So like try hard, yeah, <laughs> like try your best and it's a summer job and you most likely will get an offer. I'm sure you guys are all amazing, um, but still do good work, proofread stuff, have a friend look something over, but just put your best foot forward on your deliverables. Um, I completely agree with that. I think that sometimes the summer experience, again, it is, it is a lot of fun, um, but sometimes it's looked, at, it's looked at as though you don't have to work all that hard. You just have to kind of show up and be present, but you really should like and do good work, but work hard. So if you feel as though, you know, maybe you do, you're not as busy. I mean, it's okay. I mean, one thing it's like, maybe it's because it's a summer, you might not be as busy, but just because you're not busy as me, you shouldn't go looking for additional work um, or trying to 
to ask an associate if, if, or a partner if you can sit in on some meetings to again, show that you're interested and that you really want to do the work and that you are you know, not just there to enjoy your summer, but you really do want to become a part of the, the organization. Uh, just to go off what Kimberly just said, I think one thing that you can also do is start thinking through who you want to be as a lawyer and how you want to practice. And so there are a lot of good habits you can develop during a summer program because a lot of the work that you're doing is not like deal breaking work, right? But you're learning like, oh, how am I going to be the person doing this legal research? How am I going to structure my own like, how am I going to talk about this, right? The partner's going to have me talk about this. What are my notes going to look like? How am I going to schedule time? How am I going to be intentional about setting up or blocking off time on my calendar to network? How am I going to think through, like, these things that I know I'm going to have to do when I come back later? And so um, you won't know everything that you can be thinking about, but there are a lot of um, skills that you can be building, like, oh, timekeeping. That's, that's something that I hadn't even thought about as something that's, like, a whole different way of thinking about your work. But just starting to look around and be like, oh, if I were to come back here, what are the kinds of things I need to be thinking about? And who can I talk to about those things? Yeah. I mean, timekeeping is a big one that we hear about from attorneys all the time to, you know, the 0.6 tenths of an hour in many cases. So, you know, thinking about how or asking people the questions, how do you do that effectively? Now, going back at the end of the week probably is not the most effective way to rebuild your entire week and put that in for billing purposes, so great. Um, okay, um, well, thank you everybody for attending. Uh, to our panelists, thank you so much. Um, is there any information or contact information that you wanna share? I don't know, you know, email address obviously, but any other resources, um, LinkedIn or anything else you would direct them to if they, are you willing potentially if they have some individual questions, um, how can they reach out to you? Yeah, um, my full name's somewhere, so you can find me on LinkedIn um, or on the firm's website. My email is there. Um, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to assist however I can. Yeah, absolutely. If you look up, look up our names and then put Perkins Cooey in, it'll bring up our firm bios um, uh, online. And then also if we have um, if we have our LinkedIn connected, it'll be on there too. I think my LinkedIn is on my firm bio. So you can contact me however um, works best for you. Agreed to both. All right. Well, great. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your Saturday. We appreciate your time today. So, and thank you again to the panelists. Appreciate it. Thank you.